Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mining Now. Today on the uh, show, we are talking about um, autonomous trucks, specifically in the mining sector, and we're going to be featuring Pronto AI. I'm just going to keep. I'm just going to read a quick thing about them, just so you have some context of who they are. Um, they were founded in 2018. Um, and they became the first and only AV company to successfully drive coast to coast with a single driver input. Pretty amazing. So what we're going to do, we, but they've done a lot of, uh, they've also done a lot of work and are doing work in uh, the mining space with the haul trucks and things like that. So we've got uh, Kat Calkin, she's the chief technology officer and Robbie Miller. He's the chief safety officer for Pronto AI. It's going to be a fun show. Before we do that, we got to hand it over to Gowdy to give a shout out to our sponsors. Okay, so today we've got the Bucket Shop. The Bucket Shop provides wear solutions for all mining bucket applications that extend life cycles of three to four times. They help clients improve productivity and reduce operating costs by providing innovative options, including their five-piece cast lip system, uh, their cast heel shrouds, and mechanical two and five-piece buckets with optional disposable front ends. Beyond Buckets, they provide truck box assemblies and liners, custom builds, undercarriage systems, ground engaging tools, and abrasive blasting and painting. You can begin your savings today by visiting thebucketshop.ca. Next up, we also have Savino Equipment. Savino Equipment supplies new and used mining equipment around the world from placer to underground to ore processing plants. They have gold concentrating tables, trommels, and mineral jigs in stock now to take advantage of the high gold prices. You can visit them at SavinoEquipment.com where you will find more equipment every day. And next up, we also have Fenner Dunlop. Monitoring the health of your steel cord conveyor belts has never been easier. Powered by Eagle Eye, Fenner Dunlop's Bird's Eye identifies potential belt issues before they have the opportunity to create the need for larger, more time-intensive, and expensive action. Log in from your smartphone, tablet, or computer to access all your steel cord belts from one screen. Your Bird's Eye subscription also includes online remote service and call center support, on-demand on web reports, and yearly review of your system performance. You can visit them at fennerdunlopamericas.com for more information. And of course, we've got CIM, the 2022 edition of the Maintenance, Engineering and Reliability Mine Operators Conference, or MIMO, is coming to Sudbury and the world in February in a hybrid format. That means all of the conference programming, including network events and the trade show, will be available to attendees in the host city of Sudbury. And of course, the program will also be online, so virtual attendees will have access to all technical presentations and keynotes. Register Registration opens November 8th. Details on MIMO and other upcoming events are at cim.org. And last but not least, we've got Fuller Brothers. Fuller Brothers Inc. has over 59 years of tire industry experience as the world's leader in providing non-hazardous, non-toxic products that reduce tire management costs for a diverse range of customers. The acknowledged formula developers of the globally recognized tire life. Fuller Brothers also produces other quality products such as PSF Plus, PSF, Lubezit, Tire Cream, Dripless Tire Paint, Omega Tire Repair System, as well as select tire service tools and tire painting equipment. For more information, you can visit them at fullerbros.com or by calling toll-free at 1-800-547-7785. Fuller Brothers, we have the inside covered. Hello, Kat. Hello, Robbie. Welcome to the show. It's it's great to have you both on. It's uh, it's way way overdue that we have an autonomous autonomous vehicle uh, conversation on the show. So, welcome to Mining Now. Thanks for having us. Happy to be here. Yeah, it's exciting. Thank you. Uh, let's start with I, I gave the audience a little bit about the company, um, but can we get a little bit of actually your both your background, sort of your positions with the with the company? Yeah, so my name is Kat Culkin. I'm the CTO of Pronto AI. Uh, my background is in robotics. So I have uh, undergraduate and graduate degrees from the University of Michigan, and I'm definitely on the nitty gritty tech side. Perfect. <laughs> Robbie, how about you? I'm Robbie Miller. I'm Chief Safety Officer. I've been working in autonomy for, for the past decade, uh, largely on autonomous cars and trucks running on public roads. Uh, my job's been deploying this technology safely, uh, testing it safely on those public roads, whether it's uh, on 
cars operating in the Bay Area or trucks running down the highway. So is that um, this this transition? I mean, there, you know, maybe Kat, go to you is this this transition that Pronto has made from that background um, of on, on the road. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, my coworkers here have been working on on-road autonomy for like 15 plus years, um, just a ton of experience kind of since the, the birth of the field. Um, and they've been automating everything from John Deere tractors to motorcycles. So it's kind of, there's a huge breadth of experience here. Um, we actually, we also started with on-road. So what that means is like semi-trucks pulling trailers on the highway, on public roads. Um, whereas when I say off-road, I mean, you know, we're on a private road on a mine or something, pulling material uh, from a loader excavator to a stockpile or a crusher. Um, and the big difference there is that on-road, you know, you're among the public <laughs> and the public is uh, pretty unpredictable and, and a lot faster and you don't have much space. Uh, also, you know, you can't stop if you're feel you know if you're not certain that you're safe you can't just kind of park on the highway for a few minutes that's not it's not an option um so so we felt like given where the technology is across the board um this is something that is is safe and is functional for mining already so it's something that the technology is ready for this more constrained environment for like a a private road where you can control who's on it um even if it's not quite ready for these public roads I should just give a little perspective, though, but you, um, you know, Toronto did get, they got an autonomous vehicle all the way from coast to coast. Is that, I, I read that. Is that, do I have that right? I hope I'm not. <laughs> yeah, of- yeah, absolutely. And so one of the things that we say a lot is like, yep, we did it one time. Could we do it 100 times out of 100? Right. Sure. And that's something that you, you absolutely have to be able to do before you can be driverless on public roads. With but, all know, those variables, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Robbie, is that, again, just kind of building off of that, is that, was that a lot of the motivation for doing this pivot into the mining industry? No, that, I mean, that's exactly it. Um, you, can, you can drive across country once. Um, to do it 100 times out of 100 is a totally different ballgame. Mm. Um, and when you're looking for something you want to automate, you want it to be repetitive and being in a controlled environment just makes it that much easier. Like Kat said, you can control who is on the site. On top of that, you can put transponders on, you know, on the other equipment. So you know exactly where the other equipment is. And then we can take that technology we use on the highways to detect all the other actors and put that on the mine. mine. And so even with transponders and in this controlled environment, you have another level of safety. Um, even on top of that. So it's, you know, it's really just a much simpler uh, environment to operate in. Okay, Kat, I want to, I want to kind of unpack something here, because I'm sure a lot of people in the mining industry, of course, they know all about autonomous vehicles as a concept, and they, a lot of people probably seen them operating. But I'd really like to have sort of an actual technical scope of what Pronto is bringing on to site. What, what's the physical things that are going on to the vehicle, what is it, what's the technology being used, sort of that whole, that whole plethora of things. Yeah, so Pronto is an autonomy company and we specialize in retrofitting mining trucks. Uh, what this means is that we create a bolt-on kit that will drive the truck you know, from the loader or excavator and have it dump in a stockpile or a hopper. Um, so we're able to create what's called a drive-by-wire kit and that's like our compute system plus actuators. So we're able to actuate the steering and the throttle and the brakes um, for a variety of trucks. So we're able to do many different models. Um, and then this allows you to convert your existing fleet uh, into autonomous vehicles. So, and then then what about, okay, so that's sort of those, those physical controls. And then what what is sort of, I, I imagine that we've got cameras and sensors and all that sort of thing. And that is getting put onto the outside of the vehicle then? Yeah, so we have what's called a longhorn. Um, What this is, is it's like a a structure that we bolt onto the outside of the truck. Um, So it's a compute system in the center. There's like a yellow box. That's kind of the brains of the whole operation. Um, We've got a large LTE antenna that allows it to have connectivity to this site and to our home base uh, and all the other vehicles on the site. Um, There's a cooling system actually for the compute system. that allows us to push clean air, not dusty air, uh, through it. 
where we also have um, two GPS antennas on either end, the like white puck shaped things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and those are, uh, that allows us to have really high precision GPS and heading. Um, and we also have these signal lights on the edges. So the signal lights allow you to see visually, you know, what the truck is doing. So blue means the truck is engaged. It's, uh, it's autonomous. It may be parked, maybe moving, but you know, it's, there are no driver inputs being used. Uh, green means the truck is manual. That's, you know, if it's parked, it's parked. If it's driving, there's a person driving it. And amber signifies whether or not the parking brake is set. So if the parking brake is on, this amber light is on and you know that the truck is safe to approach. Wow, and then, and then what about the camera setup it, the, that itself that's actually being put into the vehicle? Yeah, so we actually have six cameras. So that we have a 360 degree view uh, at all times. So the main camera is behind the windshield that allows us to use the windshield wipers, keep it clean, mm. um, it's safe, all of that. And so that kind of sees the way that a driver does. We also have a camera in the rear underneath the bin. So that allows us to see where we're backing up and, you know, is it clear? Um, and also as we're dumping, we can see the material there. Uh, in addition, we have two cameras on either side, one kind of like facing forward, one facing back. And that allows us to see, are there people near the truck next to the truck that, you know, you can't see in the other camera angles. And that uh, gives us a really clear picture of everything that's going on around the truck. So I, I guess you have to ask what, because the one vehicle's inside, so you can use the windshield wipers. With camera being such a cameras being such a core of the technology, what about um, what about the the weather conditions and things like that outside the vehicle? Yeah, great question. Um, so for the upper cameras, those stay pretty clean. Um, the rear camera, it's part of a, a initial shift inspection, make sure it's clean. Uh, we have a cover on it as well. So. Oh, I see. Okay. So why why use the cameras as opposed to now? You're using a G GPS system for location. You're using a, a camera system for visual. And and why why specific, why go use the cameras as opposed to I mean I, I don't know like I had a car that parked itself. I believe it was just using sensors to do it. Um, so why did Pronto choose to go with the camera system? Great question. Yeah, we wanted to make sure that we kept our hardware as simple as possible and make our software as smart as possible. So cameras are very durable and they're very versatile. Um, you can see a huge variety of things. You can see what's the drivable area. You can see who's around me. Is it a person? Is it a vehicle? Is there an animal? Is there a piece of debris? Um, and so you, you get a huge amount of information from this that you would not be able to get from other sensors. And it's also super durable. Um, in addition, we're able to see a lot of like when we, we know when we don't know something, if that makes sense. So we're able to see like it's occluded, it's too dusty, maybe it's completely covered. Uh, we're able to tell when the truck is unsure and we're able to bring it to a safe stop there. Right, yeah. So this video I, um, I got sent to me, it, it's showing, I'm just gonna look, bring it up here. It's showing, it's actually showing little green squares around who people are and stuff. So is that, is that what's happening? Um, are people getting that information sent back to them? Is there someone visually seeing this with those little green squares? Or is this video just an example of, of just making sure you can see what the camera's seeing? Yeah, so this is what the truck sees at all times. Um, you can have someone monitor this remotely, but the truck is already processing all of this information. Mm. So it knows like these are people, they're walking in front of me, I should not drive. Um, there's actually a few things going on with the nets there. So the first one is the object detection, which is the bounding boxes. Right. So okay. that's, you can see there's like a box around the grader that drives in, there's boxes around the people, and there's boxes around the cars that are parked. Um, in addition, there's kind of that like overlay. Um, and that's able to segment out like this is the drivable area. Right. So that's a, a you know variable shape. You never really know what it's going to be, but it's able to pull out this is where it's safe to drive um, in our camera frame. So if you know the truck in front of you drops a huge pile of material on the haul road and it wasn't there the last time, you want to make sure that you can detect it safely. So just to sort of uh, clarify it, Kat. So this when we're when you're doing an onboarding process. This is not, you know, this is not a year worth of, of research and feasibility studies and things like that. Is that, is that sort of onboarding uh, process? 
is that a long process? Is, is it, you know, a few days? What, what is sort of the setup coming from Pronto? Yeah, yeah. So one of our core points is that we believe autonomy should be simple. Our tagline is autonomy simplified. And so uh, when we show up, the first thing is um, we, we bring a logging box and we bolt it onto one of the existing trucks. Uh, what this allows us to do, a logging box, it's like a full compute system, uh, but it doesn't do any actuation. So it's got cameras and GPS uh, that allows us to pull out, you know, what routes are you driving? How much do they change over time? Um, how often are you driving each route? What's your cycle time? Uh, what's each vehicle's uptime on the site? Um, and that gives us a really clear picture of like exactly what's going on on the site. So that when we do show up with a truck that we can actuate, um, you know, on day one, if we're lucky, uh, we have a safety driver in the seat, but we're able to start, you know, getting into production, which is extremely exciting. Um, so this isn't a huge feasibility study. You don't need a brand new fleet. We're able to retrofit your trucks. So this works for, you know, a lot smaller mines because of that, or like a wider variety of mines because of that. Um, you don't need to build entirely new roads. You know, we do need to separate out what is the autonomous operation zone and how do we control who can get in and out of that zone. Um, but you don't need a completely separate road for your autonomous vehicles and for your manual vehicles. Um, they can coexist as long as we're able to constrain like who's there and do we have, you know, devices on all the vehicles that are there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess it's one of these simple, it's an obvious thing, but it's, it's not so much telling it, it's, it's telling it where to go, but it's also telling it where not to go, especially on a mine where there is so many, there is a lot of offshoots and things like that. Yeah, for sure. So we have a lot of, you know, safety cases on where it's allowed to be and, and how fast can it be going around other people and, you know, who does it need to be in contact with in order to drive safely? So, so yeah, there's a lot of constraints on it. Yeah, uh, Robbie, I think I think we need to bring you in at this point to talk about that that sort of that on site involvement um, that Pronto was bringing to it because I'm I'm sure that's a major talking point as much as the technology about this integration onto their site. Can you just walk us through a little bit, not just the process but also sort of the the questions and concerns that people do have when you're starting these conversations? Yeah, no, that's that's a great. Great uh, question. Um, a lot of the concern is, you know, is this deployment going to introduce new risk um, or additional risk to the to the site? And, you know, frankly, the technology doesn't make sense if it's going to add risk. It's there to right. eliminate risk and improve safety. And so, you know, as Kat mentioned, we do this by operating in an autonomous operating zone. We're able to constrain our environment completely. And then with these logging boxes, we already have before we even show up on day one, we have a great understanding of how your site's operating. Mm -hmm. And so when we do show up, we can immediately, um, you know, introduce ourselves to the team, get the, let them know what we're going to be doing, and then put a, you know, once our system's on a vehicle, we can put our driver in the vehicle, and it'll just safely be operating with someone behind the wheel, ready to take control. Um, you know, similar to how you see it on public roads when uh, Waymo or these other uh, robo taxi companies are testing on public roads with a driver behind the seat, ready to take control. Right. And then you're actually, so you, but there is a certain amount of training that's going into their staff as well, training them how to, to handle being around these vehicles. Yeah. So we, everyone who's going to be, once we remove that driver um, from the vehicle, everyone who's going to be operating within the autonomous operating zone, needs to have specific training on how to operate around these vehicles, um, whether that's, you know, a water truck or a loader operator or a grader. You know, Kat, I just want to quickly jump over to you back for a second is, is just, is sort of the, uh, a little bit of the comparison, you know, obviously you're not going to say, well, this competitor isn't as good. And you know, I realize that, but just sort of, so that that comparison of of sort of what's out there in the industry and sort of you know as a sort of a shameless plug what what separates out the pronto technology the pronto method you know a little bit of what robbie's talking about and in, in actually you know integrating in into with their team and everything like that what sort of separates that out in, in your from your perspective yeah 
Shameless plug time. Uh, <laughs> we believe that uh, that our background on on road, you know, among the public driving has given us a lot of knowledge. Uh, so we're bringing really cutting edge technology that people are trying to use for on road today, but they're not quite ready for. But it is good enough for mining, and it's able right. to. So we're able to use cameras and, and use a lot of neural nets that maybe other people aren't able to use yet. So that also allows us to be um, really nimble. You know, we don't have to map the site out super precisely or anything in order to drive on it. We're able to kind of see a, a road and know like this is the drivable part without, you know, uh, without it being something that we've seen a, a million times before. What has to actually be in place um, to introduce uh, uh, pronto and autonomy on onto their site. Yeah, yeah. The first step is uh, enthusiasm and uh, being excited and interested in integrating autonomous vehicles into your site. Um, but one of the cool things about Pronto's technology is that it doesn't require multi-year, super expensive feasibility studies or you know private roads or brand new fleet. Um, so we're able to, this is kind of the reason why camera works so well, um, is once we retrofit your trucks, um, the site, we're able to like process the site via camera and we don't need, you know, markers all the time or anything like that. We're able to like drive on a variety of roads. Um, and yeah. And so the, the, the key here is that it's really versatile and is really accessible for a variety of sites. Uh, we do need good connectivity, um, but we're actually able to roll out our own LTE networks if necessary. Um, so that's something that we have experience with just because we know that mines are not always in places where you can uh, have a phone call. <laughs> no, no, certainly not. So you actually are bringing out system, the connectivity. You'll actually provide that support as well if, if their levels are, are too low. Yeah, we have experience setting up our own towers and and running our own LTE network to support our sites. Now, Robbie, you met, uh, jumping back over to the training. Um, now, is this an ongoing thing? Like, like for example, you get you know, let, let's say you you are are they you have staff on, they're in the trucks with people, and then but now there's a changeover. You know, there's a twenty percent shift in in who the staff is. Um, do you then come back in? Do you train them to train their people? How does that process work? So we will train your team to also be able to continue training for new employees. Um, but we're going to also come by and continue to check on the operation and make sure it's operating smoothly and, and help out any way we can. We're not, you know, not going to hand over an autonomous system and wish you the best of luck. We're going to remain on site for for, for a significant amount of time, make sure the operation is going smoothly um, before we, you know, as we say, hand over the keys. Right. Did, what about the scale of mine? And that's, that's always something I'm curious about with these types of technology. Are we talking, you know, large scale or could someone in a smaller operation um, sort of go, I guess a combination of the last question of the scale of mine, but also what I asked Kat is, the um what needs to be in place for a mine sort of just does, does there have to be a certain scale to make it worth it yeah so i mean historically with autonomous haulage on mining it's really been left to the big players you know the the bhps or rio tintos um and what's unique about our system is it, it is you know it's cost effective even with just a handful of vehicles on, you know, on a smaller mine or even a quarry. Um, we're able to quickly implement the system safely using the technology that was initially developed for public roads. Um, so whereas the other systems, it takes these multi-year feasibility studies. You need to completely overhaul your entire mine. Um, and it's just years and years of implementation and millions and millions of dollars where that doesn't make sense on these smaller mines, but where you know we we can come in and have a truck operating autonomously with a safety driver in a matter of days, and then you know a little bit further on we can take that driver out. Mm -hmm. And then what you see with this technology is, um, you know, it dramatically improves your efficiency. So you're going to see reductions in 
and your fuel usage and your wear and tear on your tires. Okay, and I said, and yeah. Costs. But what really, um, where the savings can really have a huge impact is because we're able to run more efficiently, you don't need as many vehicles. And so once you're able to, you know, remove a vehicle or two from your fleet, you're going to have, you know, huge savings. You know, I, I was wondering, and I, I'll throw this question out to both of you. Um, the, you know, the chief technology officer on, as part of mine, some of these smaller operations probably still don't have them. Um, but a lot of, a lot more operations do have them, um, which is not, it's actually not that uh, old of a thing. I mean, 30 years ago, they didn't have that position. That was it's still fairly new. Is there, what is the understanding of the technology now? When you show up to, to a mine and you're starting that combination, uh, maybe both of your answers, it'd be interesting to see the different perspectives. Is there, are, are, you, ha have you, are you having to handhold on those first steps still, or is there a pretty clear understanding of what you're doing quite quickly now? Yeah, I'll start with this one. Um, so I think like people are in two camps and one of them is like, I don't think this truck knows anything and I'm nervous around it. And the other one is like, cool, like, is it gonna like pick me up a Slurpee at 7-Eleven if I ask it to? And like kind of bringing those together and saying like, it's very smart, but it's limited in what it can do. So it will drive, you know, only these trails. It will stop for any people that it sees or like any vehicles that it sees or like have a transponder on it, things like that. But, you know, it, it's very, uh, it's very limited in scope still, you know, it's not going to be rogue on the highway anytime soon. Um, so kind of talking through like what it can and can't do and uh, what they should be expecting from it and, and how to work it is, uh, I think everyone, there's a learning curve on both sides each time. I'll say that. Yeah, it's, it's sort of understanding. I guess that is an important thing is to because that almost that fear of what what will it could it possibly start doing and understanding you no know, it's it's operating in these parameters so it's not going to be doing some of this other stuff which is also a good thing it's going to it's going to stay within this very particular box which it's been trained to do essentially yeah exactly yeah very constrained environment like we said and then what about from you Robbie do you have sort of the, a perspective of of what of sort of feedback you get quest, common questions you're getting from people yeah, and there's there's a lot of people in the industry who just think this technology isn't meant for them or that it's not meant for their site because you know their their understanding is it's hundreds of millions of dollars to right. to deploy and you know that's that is what it has been in the past um, but there's been because we use cameras and we have um, these neural nets now we're able to offer this technology and offer it quickly at a much more reasonable price point. And so I think that's one of the big barriers for us is, is breaking down this idea of um, the cost associated with it. And next is showing, I think a big part is showing how it is safe and explaining that and explaining, hey, we operate in an autonomous operating zone and you only, you know, by operating a controlled environment, you only have people who are supposed to be in that environment. And, you know, all the fallbacks that, you know, Kat and her team have put into the system where, you know, you're not going to have a road truck, you know, driving through berms or anything as the truck will come to a stop if it, you know, deviates from its planned course in the slightest bit. So um, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of learning that needs to happen. But as Kat mentioned earlier, um, you know, the sites that are ideal are the people that are willing to learn and are excited um, right. to learn about this technology. Is, is it a collaborative, you know, in the technology development side, is it a bit of a collaborative effort as well? You know, are you still getting, how do I say it? Is the technology to a point now where it's, it's ready to go anywhere, anytime, or is there still that, that, that R and D side of things where it can operate within this scope but you talk to a new a new company that has you know a, a particular setup that you go oh this is a new development that we need to implement. Yeah, so I'd say our system is really versatile. Um, when it comes to like driving from point A to point B, we're quite good at that. But with that said, every time we go to a new site, we do learn something new. Whether it's like a new feature that actually has to be added, or just like you know something that we find out our system can do as well. You know, it's a it's a 
scenario that we already handle um, because we saw something similar enough at another site. But you know, they are all a little bit different. So there's definitely some learning that happens on both sides. I think, uh, well, thank you both for joining. I think one day uh, we'll need to have a show with me doing the interview in the vehicle that's that's being dr driven autonomously. I, I think that's the next step to this. Let's do it. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you both for coming on the show. I, I mean, it, it's it's just so exciting for me. It's like an uh, an honor to even get to do these interviews, you know, because there's so much going on in mining, um, but autonomous vehicles. And actually, I just want to say th there's a quick. Um, you mentioned the loaders. This is not just haul trucks. Of course, that's where all the, what all the pictures are, and that's what everybody sort of focuses on. But is it just is it just haul trucks, or is it all it's it's other vehicles on the fleets as well? For right now, just haul trucks. We're also looking into water trucks as well. Um, loaders, there's a lot of skill in knowing, you know, which material to grab first. It's definitely something we've looked at, but you know, it'll be a yeah. little while. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I thought you had said loaders earlier and I was thinking, man, that must be a little bit tricky <laughs> you yeah, know, with the glass important. sites and all this sort of stuff. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Both of you, thank you for coming on the show. I hope you come back on and, you know, I, I think you'll get a lot of traction from this episode because there is a ton of interest in it obviously so uh yeah all, all the best to pronto I, i'm sure this is just the beginning of the story thank you appreciate it thank you thank you okay everyone um yeah go to go to pronto their website is um which i i like how they do it pronto.ai uh, we're gonna of course have lots of links and be tagging them on linkedin uh but make sure to check out more about what they're doing and we'll have links to connect with their team and everything like that Please follow us. Thank you for watching. Uh, we're on YouTube and um, all the all the podcast platforms and LinkedIn and all these platforms. You can follow us. If you have a suggestion for a guest, so many of our guests now are suggestions from people or people connecting with us. Please feel free to reach reach out. You know, even if you don't come on the show and you just want to know more about it, we're always happy to talk to you. Thank you for watching the show and see you on the next episode of Mining Now.